right, good morning again. Thanks, everyone. All right, so kind of an exciting way um, to kick off a discussion of employee experience, because that's why we're all here, because we all care intimately about providing an amazing employee experience to everyone that works at our company. Let me introduce myself. I'm Jill Popelka. I'm joined on stage by Peter Soloway, who's one of our experts in employee experience. And we want to share a little bit about the reality today of employee experience. We'll then take you through a little experience here in the room, and then we'll talk about some customer case studies, what some customers are doing, some of our customers are doing, to really drive forward an amazing employee experience. Try the other button. Three times. All right. OK, so let's start with reality. Two-thirds of our workforce is disengaged. That's a challenge, right? And again, that's why we're here today, to talk a little bit about what we're going to do about it. Two million employees turn over every month globally. And I'm sure with the population of India, that's a pretty big number here in India as well, right? And last, to tie this to our company's true missions, 80% of consumers will switch brands due to a poor experience. Why is that relevant for us today? Because employees determine our customers' experience. All of us have customers, and our employees are the face of our company to those customers. And so they can determine the success or failure of our business. And as we were reminded by that video, experience and emotion and how you experience the day can mean a lot of things, right, in a lot of different places. OK, so th those were some of the, the challenging statistics. Let's talk about the good news. The good news is companies that focus on employee experience have 17% higher employee productivity. That's incredible. Three times more revenue per employee at companies where employees are engaged. And last, and I think very relevant for India today, is that 40% lower turnover than the average achieved by engaging your employees and really driving that amazing employee experience. OK, so just to just really put some facts around that, um, that experience gap, 69% of C-level executives believe that their employees are engaged, right? And these are people that you probably sit around the boardroom table with, and they're thinking, we're doing fine, right? Well, in reality, 34% of employees believe they're engaged. That's a much lower number, right, tied back to that two-thirds that are disengaged. 71% of executives believe their employees are satisfied with their benefits, that they're doing fine. But as HR professionals in the room, we know that only 48% of employees truly believe that they're getting the best benefits. And then last, 81% believe that their employees would recommend their company as a great place to work, while in reality, only 38% of employees over social media and all of those different channels would really recommend the company that they work for. So how can we change this? What are we going to do to change the way that our employees see our company, to create a more productive work environment, and to improve our company's revenue? Well, Peter, I'm going to hand over to you to share a little bit more. Thank you, Jill. Um, we'd like to invite you to pull out your mobile phones and um, please scan this QR code on your left. Uh, if you don't have an iPhone or if your QR code is not working, um, you can follow these instructions down here on the right-hand side. Um, we opened our, uh, our speech. The video spoke that as human beings we experience 27 different emotions. And uh, I think I experience 27 different emotions every hour. Um, our last speaker also just spoke about the importance that it's not just about technology, that we are managing people. So what will happen in a moment, we'll just give you a couple of minutes to scan that code. We're going to do a live experience pulse check in the room to see how we're all feeling, um, and then t carry on that story a little bit further. Um, so just a reminder, just scan that code. If you've got an iPhone, you should have a link that will open up a poll in Safari. Uh, and if that's not working for you, or if you have a laptop, uh, you can follow these instructions down here on the right. And I told Peter, I love doing this employee, I mean, this uh, audience engagement, but I'm always the slowest one to like dig out my phone and try to get to the QR code, right? So we're going to give everybody just another minute to make sure that you're, how's everybody doing on connecting? Is it coming through? Just raise your hand. Yeah, doing okay? Yep, good. Okay. 
Looks like the front of the room, maybe the back of the room. Don't Are be we okay in the back of the room? Scan if you need to. We'll just give it another 30 seconds. All right, so on your screens, um, you should have a question about how you are feeling today. Um, I asked you to wear the like really hot, sweaty face from being in Delhi all day today, but I guess it's early, so maybe not yet. Now, the, the, um, the graphic is a little bit skewed for some reason. That's a technical issue. But what we're seeing here is life experience information. I'm very pleased to see most people are in the green. Um, we do have a few people there. Oh, someone's changed their yellow. Um, so a live pulse check there. All right, two more questions. So your phones will update with a new question set. The next one we want to ask, and again, I don't know whether the AV guys can fix that in the back of the room, but um, the question here is asking, um, in your organisation, uh, how effectively are you managing employee experience at the moment? Would you say that it, at your organisation, you're managing experience effectively or ineffectively? It's fun, right, to think about this after we just saw the experience gap metrics, right, that we probably know, this room probably knows our employees best, right? But we also know that there may be some out there that aren't giving us the feedback yet, right, that we're having trouble to really understand how exactly are all of our employees experiencing their career. Okay, uh, interesting results. So uh, a very natural bell curve there. I can see a standard distribution. So moderately effectively, looks like we have some room to move. Um, and some people that are very ineffective or uh, not effective at all. And so finally, for those people who are tracking employee experience, and this is a multi-choice, you can select more than one answer, what are some of the things you're doing? Um, are you doing an annual engagement survey, for example? Okay, now the one on the left, which is cut off, I believe is saying annual employment survey. So a lot of people are doing that. Looks like the second most popular might be a continual feedback, uh, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more. Yeah, that's great news. And I love the people that are already using analytics to aggregate the experience data. That's fantastic too. Okay, just give that 10 more seconds. That's really interesting stuff. So I'm really pleased to see that there are a, a broad range of businesses that are already thinking about this. Because um, HR professionals, the people in this room, we are the custodians of our workforce experience. It's up to us to ensure that we are uh, curating that amazing experience for our employees. Um, and it's really important because our experience, our workplace culture is a public knowledge, right? You can log into glass doors, uh, LinkedIn, and I can tell exactly what that employer or what my life like is going to be like as an employee working for that business. So what we've been doing for many years at all various levels of maturity is capturing what we call O-Data. Because we believe there are two types of data you need to be successful. So O-Data is operational data. Uh, and this is stuff that your HR systems do very well. So how many people did we hire? How many people left? Um, were they male, female? Uh, what is the average rate of uh, offer acceptance, for example? But the big difference that we see is uh, capturing what we call experience data, so that second type of data, or X data. So while well, operational data or data tells you what has happened, the trend, the X data tells you why that has occurred. So it's about tracking sentiment, looking at trust, uh, looking at health and well-being, um, employee satisfaction. So the merging of this information together allows us to continually improve our HR processes. So um, talking about moments that matter, this is a, a tool that we can use in HR to track experience. Because a moment is any particular point in time, but there are some moments that we remember forever. Um, you know, when you, got, when you graduate university, for example. Um, I know in August last year, uh, my partner and my parents-in-law visited Varanasi. That was a moment I will remember forever. Mm -hmm. uh, beautifully spiritual place. Um, but likewise, your employees are going to have moments that matter as um, employees of your organisations because we're all human beings. We all have career aspirations. We come to work in part to support our families and to create a better life for ourselves. And so when you have a look at those moments that matter as an employee, just imagine your first day on the job. Um, or perhaps the first time that you are promoted. 
but it's also about the intersectionality between work and life. So um, maybe you're going to start a family for the first time or want to re-engage in study. So uh, as HR, we are the custodians of that experience. The tools and processes and technology that we provide our people can make these moments that matter highly stressful or amazing experiences of growth. And what I found was really interesting was if you look at the entire work life of the average human being and where to concatenate that into one shift, you'd be working a 13 to 20 year shift. So we work 13 to 20 years of our lives end to end. Take out one third of your life when you're sleeping, and we spend so much of our time at work. So being able to offer that experience to reduce um, turnover and to attract great ta talent is a key uh, measure. Right, so um, HR needs to look at the platform that we provide and the process that we provide because our HR teams are divided into specialties, right? So we have learning specialists and recruiting specialists and HRBPs, and that's really important because they, they specialise in their area of expertise. But as an employee who ha wants to have a career path discussion, I don't think in siloed manner. I don't think, well, there's the learning plan and there's the career path and there's the mentor and all the bibs and bobs. So instead, we need to consider the different experiences. And these are totally different. So if you have a look at your candidate experience, this starts long before they hit the apply button. So people start engaging with your business and your brand long before they even start to think about making an application. Likewise with your employee experience. So employees are casual users of HR systems. So they're not in the system every day. Their needs and desires are totally different to the HR experience, which is your tool of trade, where you're in that system you know, 10 times a day, for example. So the HR platform is something we need to reimagine about how we offer these experiences to make them seamless for our various different stakeholders. So being an employer of choice is, is mandatory, is essential for them being successful. Ernst & Young locally have 37,000 employees and they operate, I think, in about 17 cities, 32 different um, offices around India. So a huge footprint here as well. And they had uh, one mandate, it was to be the employer of choice. And they knew that they had to completely digitise HR to make that happen. Um, one of the key benefits of EY was launching a chatbot, so using emerging technologies, natural language processing, which can understand employee sentiment, and they built it into the onboarding process. Uh, and when we went live, we were looking at approximately 6,000 queries, that's what we were expecting per month. Uh, it was 50,000. And uh, so it just blew, blew everyone out of the, uh, uh, out of the water. Um, and it's paid off. So in 2016 and 2017, they have one employer of choice uh, for five countries around the world. So next, we want to share a little bit about Nestle. And many of you know Nestle. I know Nestle because I love chocolate. It's one of my favorite things. And uh, Nestle's actually been in India for over 100 years. There are eight manufacturing plants here in India. And Nestle has four major offices across the country. And what's really exciting is that Nestle knew that to be a global competitor in this space, they had to have a truly, truly engaged workforce. So they had to change their employee experience. And it was critical for their business performance and also for their employee productivity to focus on three things. And the first was continuous performance management. So one of our um, questions, our survey questions, just asked, are you doing annual surveys or continuous? And the majority of us are still writing these annual surveys. But the trend in the market is really to move to continuous performance feedback because we know that feedback is more relevant, it's more effective when it's given immediately. Um, the second was mobile enabled HR experience. So Nestle wanted to make everything that they did mobile for their employees because they knew that was a more natural experience and they, they knew that they could make it more fun for their employees if that was a way that they were actually interacting with the company, right, through their mobile device. And then last, succession planning. So Nestle knew that in order to keep their high performers, what they had to do was ensure that their high performers wanted to stay. And so they used succession planning as a way to show that career path and really communicate with their employees about where they could go next. So three things, continuous performance management, mobile-enabled employee experience, and succession planning 
were the three things that Nestle did to help really drive fast toward a more skilled, more engaged global workforce. And I think they're doing it pretty well. And the last story we wanted to share with you was um, American Airlines' journey. Uh, relevant, we think, because of the growth of the airline industry here in India. Um, and this is a classic merger and acquisition story because American Airlines, by the measure of fleet size, is now the largest airline in the world. Um, and while they might be American domiciled, they operate in 60 different countries. So a few years back, American Airlines and U, uh, US Airways merged together as one entity. And that had phenomenal HR challenges from a technology and also people experience perspective. So uh, 60 countries, 60 on-premises payroll, none of of it spoke together. So we had to move that entire business, those 60 disparate systems, into one cloud platform. Uh, and the payout has just been phenomenal. So there's some uh, information on the screen. Probably the two biggest ones to point out is internal mobility. Uh, internal job applications increased threefold uh, after having that one uh, system. Uh, and the, the statistic that we're all most proud of with American Airlines is zero HR-related payroll after moving all of those disparate payroll systems together on one cloud platform. Right, so um, that's a little bit about uh, how we see the experience economy being absolutely vital as custodians of the workforce with, uh, with, uh, with HR. Um, we invite you throughout t today, just out the back of the room, we have a booth with three of our experts that can take you through what HR software looks like and what it can do with regards to employee experience. And also some really cool innovations around emerging technologies, so virtual reality and onboarding, uh, machine learning uh, in learning management systems, for example, chatbots. So um, Jill and I will be at the booths as well, and we'd absolutely love to come and meet you and, and talk more. Thanks for your time.